Hi everyone and welcome to the Just a Meme podcast where we chat about the future of making money on the web. Today we have Josh joining us from MetaGov where they are building standards in infrastructure for digital governance. Uh, really good to have you here, Josh. Um, yeah, thanks for having me here. All right. So uh, yeah, diving, diving straight in. Shall we start with yourself, like how, what your journey has been so far and then we'll move on to the team in a sec. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah. I'm Josh. I am a uh, co-founder of MetaGov, also a PhD student in computer science at Oxford. And this journey kind of began <laughs> a long time ago, actually, uh, in the sense that I think four years ago now, um, I was working with this Berlin game studio called, well, this game studio was called Clan Games, and they were building an MMO called Seed. And Seed, uh, and, and these, these folks were kind of EVE Online veterans um, who, who were really kind of impressed by the, let's say, the engagement of people in the online guilds or what they were called corporations of EVE Online. And they basically wanted to build a game kind of that really took that concept and just like min-maxed it. You know, like people will be able to create, uh, the idea is you're shipping into a new world um, you form colonies with other players and then you need to govern these colonies. You need to run them as like units and then compete with each other or trade and sort of establish laws. So there was a big emphasis on economics and on politics and sort of like building your own political economy. I was helping, anyways, I was there kind of helping them build their virtual economy, kind of specifying and figuring out like exactly how the data was going to be set up, you know, how exactly we model. Like we spent like quite a long time thinking like, how does one run a restaurant in this virtual <laughs> game? It was kind of hilarious. Um, but there was another guy who was also kind of helping that game studio at the same time uh, named Lawrence Lessig. Uh, so Larry is a professor at Harvard Law who does, he's a constitutional lawyer, I think, um, by training, but he's also done a lot, a lot of work on cyber law. Um, if you guys ever heard this, phrase code is law. Um, that was Larry who coined it. Wow, cool. And um, uh, yeah, so Larry was there kind of helping with the politics. I was there helping with the economics. We kind of just met up, started chatting, and Larry invited me to help him teach this course at Harvard Law where called Governing Virtual Worlds, which was, I think, the most hilarious course I've ever been a part of since it was literally me trying to convince law school students to play video games. Because <laughs> um, the entire point of it was the, like, how do you govern like this virtual world, right? Which, you know, most virtual worlds tend to be game worlds, um, at yeah. least when we talk about them. Uh, and it was, I, I literally had law school students coming up to me and it's like, Josh, uh, I'm not sure about this. Like, want to become addicted? And like not get A's in my classes. It's like you gotta be shooting me. I can imagine that must be like 10x at Harvard as well. Like <laughs> all, all the effort they put in to get there. <laughs> oh my god, it was hilarious. No, it was it was actually pretty funny because you know there was actually quite a range of people. Um, there was like um, a woman who had been like a PR rep for um, the Xbox. There was what was pre previously the number eight world ranking player in PUBG, uh, wow. which is like a yeah player on know battlegrounds just look it up but it's a it was like wow that's like <laughs> i know right i know <laughs> so it was it was quite a quite a fun mix and it was a lot of fun uh, but essentially out of that class grew the meta governance project um so it was larry and myself um two other people that we actually had invited as speakers to the class and we decided well, we're kind of all working on different instances of online governance. It seems like, and we're all kind of doing similar things. We're observing similar things, finding similar patterns, looking for similar tools. So it sounds like we should try to team up to figure out what kind of governance patterns or what kind of tools can we build to support governance in all these settings. Yeah. So that, that's really how the meta governance group began as kind of a semi research group slash um, software development project to try to build digital infrastructure for governance across these different platforms. Uh, since then, uh, we've gotten a lot of support from some really wonderful sponsors uh, like Grant for the Web, yep. um, uh, which I believe you guys are a part of as well, um, yep. <laughs> and for Digital Civil Society Lab. Uh, we've gotten a little bit of money from Gitcoin and the Cardano, Cardano Foundation in the blockchain space. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. So, 
we're trying to build essentially right now a uh, well, a couple of things. There's a couple kind of um, there's a few experiments kind of running in parallel, but the main one uh, is called Metagov, the tool, um, and it is uh, right now a unified sort of uh, think of it as like a toolkit for rapid prototyping of governance systems. Um, okay. Yep. So it kind of um, integrates and sort of serves up in a kind of like um, easy to access API, unified um, API gateway, a whole bunch of different governance services that already exist. So the idea is that, um, you know, governance can be made modular, but rather than trying to construct those modules ourselves and building kind of like half-assed products, um, look at sort of the state of nature or just look at like what exists out there in the world today you know, what people are using for governance. And oftentimes it's like, there are discrete, you know, products that, you know, source credit, for example, is a reputation tool. Open Collective really helps for kind of managing the finances of, especially like open source projects. Yep. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different things like Stanford Participatory Budgeting Project, Lumio, um, obviously web, mon web monetization is a form of that. So okay. stitching, finding way to, ways to stitch together all these different services so that people can you know, very quickly spin up governance systems on top of any existing digital platform or online community. So yeah. that's essentially. No, that's sort of, quite, yeah. that's quite interesting. Cause uh, I mean, we had discussions before about how you'd, I mean, it, that gives me a, a better understanding of the whole end to end process. So you're making like a, a, a best of breed pick and mix for governance things. And I guess you just integrate whichever ones you like or different flavors of some in, in different ways to make it one unified governance that, you know, responds to your users needs better than maybe what you could design on your own in five years sort of thing. Exactly. It's very, it uh, comes out of like, it's really like noticing that something that's happened, um, like already happening, like some of the most popular or sort of like well-known governance experiments have essentially been like giant mashups involving like 10 different, you know, online platforms. Yeah. And what we're trying to do is like sort of make that process simpler, easier, and a little bit more elegant. Um, so you can stitch together a bunch of services. I mean, because governance systems are complex. And the fact is most digital communities, um, they don't live on one platform. They live on across like multiple ones. Like, you know, if you look at a typical blockchain, they're using, I mean, we literally did this like a little like data analysis of this somewhere, um, but you know, you can look at um, a typical blockchain or DAO will be using uh, like Telegram, Discord, Twitter, Discourse, um, as well as the technical tools that are like specific to that blockchain. Yeah. So it's just, um, it's just one of those things where like, okay, this is already happening. Let's, how do we make this better slash easier and more accessible so that, you know, things like, uh, uh, how do I say it? Uh, so that like, well, there's, there's kind of two ways when we think about this. Like one is like make it easier for communities to sort of actually access some of these tools. The other thing is like make it easier for the developers of these tools to kind of either to interoperate with each other so that you can build yeah. sort of connections, but also to, uh, I think more, I think, how do I say it? Um, uh, more importantly, I think from their perspective, like to more easily um, or just like automatically integrate the whole bunch of different platforms. Because if you're building governance service, you're obviously like, you need to find users, right? Yeah. Users typically are living on certain platforms. Like what I think of like social platforms, like, um, like Slack, Discourse, uh, you know, Discord, uh, like the whole, like typically what we think of as like social media, such forum, yeah. forum platforms, uh, as well as like Telegram and WhatsApp and things like that. Uh, so targeting these for integration so that when you're building a governance service, you don't have to build the integrations yourself. You just target one API sort of framework and it'll kind of like shuffle you around so you can, people in these different places can just immediately access them. Okay, yeah. And it, it sounds like that will be like really important for this vision of uh, an open web or web three, depending on how, which way, <laughs> which way, who you're talking to. <laughs> yeah, it depends um, on which, how you define it. Yeah, Web3 is it, a kind of like an amorphous concept. Yeah, because <laughs> every day I see like governance tokens and stuff being released. Um, I can't remember who, who was the big one who did it recently, but they, they dropped like the, the governance version of their token and that flew off the shelf. And all these blockchain projects must be, I imagine building it from the ground up a lot of the time. And this just sounds like, 
a, such a good step in the direction of okay now yeah like i said before kind of best of this has been proven out this is how the the end result looks like we have a community that's thriving or this this one didn't work out so well because they forgot to think of this this and this but mm -hmm. when the new developer comes in and goes okay how am i going to govern this and you go well here's a proven method already it kind of cuts out so many hours of r d for developers yeah um, absolutely okay. well that's, that's entirely hope you know it's, it's 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 right now it's very much like developer focus because yeah. you know there's a whole bunch of ui and ux that we need to do to actually make this like let's say like end user accessible yeah um but uh so right now it's really focused on sort of the needs of developers who are either building platforms or building services yep uh, and the kind of like the vision is that you know if you're spinning up like a new i don't know like a new smart contract or you're building um like a like spinning up some sort of new social media uh website or you just like you know creating a discourse instance in which like you see like governance being an issue instead of like spending a long time thinking like oh, how's this going to work you literally just like make this a few calls you install this plugin that just kind of ships in with a whole bunch of other plugins uh, just kind of automatically and you can just like pick and choose which ones you, you might want uh so you can just kind of like set it and forget it until yeah. like you know well uh, governance uh, okay that is not you, you don't you, you don't forget, forget it, governance like eventually <laughs> you're gonna talk you're gonna have to figure this out um but here's like you know here's the step where you can like kind of just set this and think about it later i suppose and so that you have like you okay you put a pin in the board you know this is going to have to come up at some point there's some like preparatory work that we've done for you yep uh, so you're like more in, in better shape when these kind of questions rise up oh great um yeah so i mean i think we mentioned it already we we met through grant for the web um is there a specific project that you're working on with them or is it kind of just integrating web monetization as a form of governance is, is that well, the main focus of that project for you it definitely is a form of governance um the main focus though uh is actually uh first for um to kind of do an experiment with web monetization to essentially um build a kind of like participatory budgeting workflow on top of it so the idea is that like you know web monetization so this is currently set up for you know like well, actually, we're, we're, like for example, we were talking about the RevShare example, but maybe I should introduce that a little bit. Um, so, you know, web monetization is currently like you point, uh, you set these meta tags and you set a payment pointer to like a wallet or whatever. Um, but what if that, you know, the ultimate payee, uh, so the person benefiting is like an entire community, right? So you might have, let's say a forum where a bunch of people are kind of freely participating you want to set up web monetization to support like this, like, let's say like, maybe it's an open source community. Maybe it's like an interest group. Um, but the point is it's like, it's, it's a community. It's not really owned by any one person, uh, or at least like, you know, even if there's an admin, there's like this feeling that like everybody's contributing. So everybody yeah. should benefit. So how do you then deal with, like, how do you govern this wallet or how do you sort of like make decisions based on the proceeds of this, you know, uh, web monetization. So it's essentially what we're trying to do is build, take existing participatory budgeting by, uh, pipelines or processes, uh, typical sort of like processes by which we make allocations from like collective allocations from a wallet. And so we just build that on top of web monetization. So figure okay. out how exactly we sort of like, you know, yeah, essentially take that money, pass it through a pipeline, and then this money gets emitted. So, so yeah, so I guess as an example, take, I don't know, a Stack Overflow or, or something like that or Quora or something. And maybe you have a question from someone and then a couple of answers and then the verified answer. Or are you kind of thinking that we could, you, you mentioned Rev sharing before, which is kind of splitting up these, these streams of payments to the various mm -hmm. people to benefit a community. Yeah. So maybe a small amount of the money when you're looking for the answer go, goes to the question asker because they asked a relevant question sort of thing. And then the, I guess the main the line share goes to the correct answer as voted on by the community. Mm -hmm. and maybe there's some sort of balancing act that you do there, which is the governance layer. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a really good example. So okay, essentially, like, if you think about like what a participatory, like what is participatory budgeting? It's really just like a set, like a voting system whereby at the end of the day, you get this like this vector of like these people get this much money. 
it can allocate, yep. right? And that's um, this ref share example that you know is currently exists in web in the web monetization kind of standard, uh, or it's a, it's a kind of tested experiment, and I know it's something you guys are experimenting with already. Um, that's essentially like the same thing. It's basically a weighted pointer saying the, these people will get this much money, right? You know, probabilistically. But essentially, it's an allocation, right? And that allocation needs to be governed, I, especially in a community setting. Like, why should these people be getting this much versus like everybody else, right? Yeah. Um, so essentially, that needs to be governed where there's a collective decision making process about like how exactly you know that allocation should work, and we're trying to provide that. Or uh, more than that, trying to give people the tools to build their own to choose the pipeline that makes the most sense for them. Yeah. Okay, cool. And there's a, it's a kind of grand vision. I think we touched on it a bit earlier, but kind of this, I guess something, you, you probably want this to be quite open or may, maybe it's down to the developer's choice, whether they have it kind of as community rules on like a big stone tablet when you enter their forum <laughs> or something, or you know, able to be interrogated. Is it, is it being built on a, in a blockchain-y sort of way or is it is it just kind of a separate, you know, are you going to introduce like a MetaGov token or something in the oh, in God. the future? Is that where it goes or uh, would it be, would that be a, all manners of madness <laughs> kind of? Uh, I don't think we're currently planning on a token. That would okay. be, there are a bunch, as you can imagine, there are a bunch of lawyers in the project. Yeah, I, I imagine. Feel they might have some qualms about that. <laughs> um, I know. I know. Certainly, like a lot of our um, academic institutions find that kind of problematic. Um, the um, that said, I, I think that we're definitely trying to build more. Uh, so we're building a couple of use cases right now with um, smart contracts and blockchains. Uh, so, for example, um, on May fourteenth, we will be kicking off a the Open Web Governance Challenge. So this is something we're organizing, um, co-organizing with NIR, which is a kind of a layer two blockchain. Yeah, we've worked with them uh, yeah. in the past, yeah. <laughs> um, so we are kind of essentially running NIR's Open Web Challenge, which essentially what the kind of idea is, we'll be taking like the prototype of MetaGov that exists at that point, you yep. know, providing it to a bunch of hackathon participants. And then they'll be using it to sort of make connections between, let's say, existing, well, both to make extensions to existing kind of like DAO infrastructure on near uh, DAOs are decentralized autonomous organizations. Just Google them. They're essentially like um, governance entities that kind of exist already in blockchains. And Is figuring out like, like how um, do we- Consensus yeah. and stuff that that's probably the biggest example of a DAO uh, yeah, I sort yeah. of know, but maybe it's a I mean, quasi- they're, they're really just like, <laughs> most DAOs are just really like bare bones, multi-sig management of a wallet, right? Yeah. Um, there's very little governance in some sense going on. It's just like majority vote at most. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's DAOs from the governance perspective are not that interesting. Blockchains are a little bit more interesting because obviously there's the economic component and that is definitely very much a form of governance um, yeah. how we design these incentives. Uh, but yeah, so essentially like sort of making connections between like the current um, uh, uh, DAO infrastructure uh, inside near and sort of, but also sort of like exploring out, even outside of New York, just like how, you know, what kind of new experiments might we run as we're building, you know, new forms of governance, helping people coordinate, building sort of the right incentive systems. Uh, I kind of think of it as like, how do we sort of introduce certain kind of like web two mechanics around community into that, like a very web three sort of uh, yeah. essentially ecosystem where like everything is thought of in terms of like, well, you, one way to say is like ownership. Another way is really just in terms of like how much money can I make, right? Yeah. So integrating these two sort of very different perspectives. Um, okay. Yeah, it sounds like you've got quite a challenge on your hands. Well, I <laughs> mean, it, it's it's a challenge that we're hoping the the hack on the participants, the challenge participants will be able to help us out with. Um, but we'll be providing be providing like tools, data sets that you can kind of like access both on near as well as for MetaGov. And um, uh, MetaGov itself, like the prototype that exists then, hopefully will make things easier, uh, as well as a bunch of training and um, sort of different like mentorship and office hours and workshops. So that'll be May 14th. May you can 14th. look it up at uh, just Google Open Web 
uh, Open Web um, Summit, I believe. Okay, and that's when it's announced, or when before you want to sign up before then. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's um there's a kind of like big networking event slash sign up session on right. the fourteenth. Um, oh, okay, but there will be like also a couple of events beforehand, just like Q and A, kind of encourage people, encouraging people to form teams beforehand. That's sort of cool. Oh, I should just mention there's like like a hundred thousand dollar plus uh, worth of prizes. Okay, involved, so that's. So. Good incentive to go and uh, explore it. Is that yeah. going to be on uh, metagov.org that people can find a link? Or... Uh, so there will be a link there showing up soon. We're still like putting together the like the launch website because cool. like it's about a month and a half away. But the um, uh, you can actually look at it. Should be if you go to openweb.community, um, there's a sign up for the conference. That's kind of um attached to the hackathon or I mean okay. conference and hackathon you can get a ticket there and then you'll get all the notifications when we start rolling out new um, new content especially like rules and announcements related to the to the hackathon okay. I definitely attend the conference too it's like quite fun there's a lot of like really cool people talking yeah yeah I see that you got guys from defiant which is quite a good uh, thing to read up on mint base uh, da da Got quite a few NFT guys floating around, don't you? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll drop it in the uh, show notes. So definitely check that out. Um, and yeah, I guess kind of uh, rounding off, uh, is there any kind of, it's probably like a, a random question, but is there any kind of other crypto projects that you're interested in or projects outside of maybe Grant for the Web and what we've talked about that you'd, you'd encourage people to go look at to maybe help their understanding or just something mm. you're interested in really mm. keeping an eye on <laughs> well oh god there's a lot here uh, <laughs> to be clear i'm not a crypto person um okay really yeah like a, i'm a we i'm an ai slash governance person um okay. but the uh so I'll, I'll throw in a few shout outs there's a friend of mine who runs something called state box so background on me i'm um, something called, uh, how do I say it? I'm trained in something called category theory, which is a branch of math. And Statebox is an attempt to uh, essentially do apply certain kinds of formal mathematical modeling to blockchains so that make them more conformant, uh, more flexible, more powerful. Okay. Uh, and it's based on category theory. Uh, so they've, I think, got Ethereum grant uh, a year ago or something, which they're currently sort of wrapping up now. So maybe it's like a cool project to check out. Uh, there's another project that's related to MetaGov that uh, I also run called GovBase. And if it, actually anybody uh, listening is interested in that, please let me know um, because we're kind of looking for more community involvement in this. But essentially it's an open database okay. of a whole bunch of stuff in governance. It has like 500 different projects in online governance. It's including a ton of software projects, I should say, in online governance, including a ton of kind of blockchain services, or let's say like services inside the blockchain ecosystem or centered around governance, as well as a fairly decent database of DAOs and how they're governed, uh, built um, that we kind of worked on together with Barata, who's the formerly, I think, head of community at Aragon. Okay, yeah. And, um, yeah, so it's like kind of like a collective effort. It's a collaboration between a bunch of people, myself, Michael Zargum at Black Science, Kevin Warbach, uh, Primavera de Filippi, um, Ali Reddy. Uh, it's a bunch of academics working in the blockchain space who are kind of like trying to work together and understand like how do we build like a complete picture of governance of these different entities. Um, so yeah, that's um, another project well, that- Yeah, you got about that. 355 in that first database of projects that are governance related. Cool. No, oh, that looks really cool. Yeah, I'll definitely drop all these links uh, below. And uh, no, I think that's really cool and uh, definitely exciting to see where where we will most definitely be checking it out because we have Telegram groups and Slack groups and Discord groups that <laughs> could probably do with a layer of governance, make sure <laughs> it's all running as we intend it and. Uh, yeah, it'd be great to see how the project evolves. Um, yeah, I think for anyone listening, I'll drop the I'll drop links in the show notes. So uh, if you want to find out more, click on there. And I guess that's all for today. Thanks, Josh, for uh, dropping in and uh, 
sharing your projects. I think it's really interesting. Awesome. It's been a pleasure. Cool. Okay. Uh, well, thanks for, for thanks all for today. And thanks for tuning in to Just A Meme podcast, where we talk about the future of making money on the web. Uh, please do give a, get involved, give us a like, send, a, send some comments and a review. And uh, please also subscribe to check out the next session. And yeah, spread the word to your friends. All right. Nice one.